I've had a few requests to show my setup and how I modified my kayak that I use for kayak fishing. It's a very cheap model bought at Kmart. Therefore, it's a relatively popular model right now just because of the fact that you can get these for 200 bucks. The first modification I made to the kayak was a front rod holder, which I also bought from Kmart at the time of buying the kayak. It's an okay rod holder. It worked relatively well. However, this part right here, as you can see, kind of moves with a little bit of force and it's not very well built. And I can move it back and forth just a little tiny bit and you can see it's springing away from the boat quite a bit and I'm barely putting any force on the top of that. Uh, the adjustment here works okay. You can adjust it this way. You can also lift it partially out and you can see how it's set up. You can rotate it and then put it halfway back down in the grooves again so you can have it at almost any angle. I secured this one with stainless steel bolts that I had three of at the time and then I had one bolt that was a little bit longer that's not stainless steel. Uh, these bolts were the right size and I just happened to have them because I live on a farm and we have lots of hardware lying around. They happen to be the perfect size to basically thread right in. There's the back sign with the bolt heads and the lock washers behind them so that way they don't come unscrewed by themselves. I decided that I needed another rod holder on the boat and I found this one at Walmart. It's an Atwood rod holder and this one works very well. You can see how it retains the rod with a strip of plastic and since it's got these kind of little helper tabs here operating it behind you where I have it set up on the boat works very well. I would actually have one on this side, one on this side rather than having one up front if it were up to me to do it again. Maybe with a couple of flush mount rod holders right behind the cockpit for an extra rod or a net. As you can see the Atwood rod holder is held in with rivets. I used aluminum rivets here and most of the other things on the boat are held on with aluminum rivets. Like this pad eye at the back. And pad eye at the front. Those are for a anchor trolley. You can basically just run a piece of 550 cord through run it around, run it back up, tie two knots and a carabiner in the middle. I use a carabiner because it's easily removable. Uh, and you want a stainless steel carabiner or an aluminum carabiner to do so. A cleat, which is also held on with the bolts because it was the perfect size to hold that on. And then I have several random pad eyes on the boat, mostly for things like this which I can use either as a paddle leash which I'll get to that in a moment or I can use it as a leash for the actual kayak itself I tied a perfection loop knot and then you want to make the loop big enough so that way you can pull right through it and take it out and then you can put this anywhere on the boat. So if I was walking up along the river and it was too shallow to run the kayak, or I just wanted to fish on shore and wanted to leash the kayak to something, I could run it through there or there or the front or the rear of the boat. The other side of the paddle leash, I use the paddles that you can get, the cheap ones at Kmart. I wrapped 550 cord and I tied a knot and I bought this little D-loop at a hardware store so I can just clip right onto that and then I've got a homemade paddle leash. I also have modified my paddle. I know some of these kayaks actually come with the paddles and they're longer and they're not asymmetrical paddles. Well paddling in the river a lot I noticed that the paddle shaft seemed extremely long and with the paddle angle it basically came straight down from the tip and mirrored what the top looks like right there and was square. It was actually a little bit longer up here too. So I shaped that with a simple saw and then use an angle grinder and a bench grinder to smooth it up.
and then sanded it down. I also cut three inches off of each side of these tubes. And those are just held in with rivets. I drilled the rivets out and then I re-riveted it. My one gripe with these paddles is that lovely little spring-loaded pin there that holds them together. It will slide up in the tube. You'll put your paddle together and the ball won't pop up. That can be incredibly frustrating. Another simple modification I made to the kayak is I drilled a couple of holes right in next to the seat and tied on some 550 cord with some perfection loops. So one of the problems I had was I would put gear in here, like a small tackle box, which fits more or less perfectly inside of there. You slide it in next to you, but one flaw, it can go all the way to the back. Then you'll be able to get hold of it again. So I put a carabiner on my tackle box, and then you can carabiner it to the 550 cord so it doesn't get lost on you. Works pretty well. Another thing, the seat. This is what you have to sit on stock. Just plastic. Just plastic. With that little supposed backrest behind you. Well, I threw in a throwable PFD. Otherwise known as just a simple boat seat. And I throw that in there to the sit The seat on. adds a lot of cushioning. It also allows you to gain a little bit more height. You can see a little bit better for casting. It can help your arms avoid the sides of the gunnels and avoid hitting things like your rod holders. Another modification I made is in my dry storage, otherwise known as damp wet storage anyway, because the seal, yeah, didn't even come close to going all the way. And I didn't care. There was no point in sealing it. Is I cut out the bottom. Now you have access to the interior of your boat. All the way up. And it opens it up a lot for things like dry bags. I bought a dry bag as well to put up in the bow, which is just perfect. I have long legs. I usually run these all the way down. They just will foot pegs. And I still have plenty of room for a dry bag down there to stuff it into the nose. One thing you should plan on doing if you're going to add modifications to a kayak is buy at least some kind of rivet gun. I bought this rivet gun from Lowe's. It only cost about $20. It came with some rivets and I got some rivets there that were relatively small, unfortunately. These length rivets do not work very well because you have to go through the plastic of the rod holder and the plastic of the boat. For pad eyes, they work relatively well because it is long enough. This length rivet, however, works perfectly. It's a half inch length, and by the time it mushrooms out, you go through the kayak and you go through a rod holder, it's about the perfect length. It holds really, really well. So what do I think about the kayak itself? The Sun Dolphin Aruba 10 is an okay little kayak. It worked well for my purposes for a while, but ultimately I had to upgrade. It's a little bit too small, which means it maneuvers well. And it's a little bit too wide, which also means that it's very stable. However, I do a lot of river fishing. So, in my eyes, it could be a lot better. It could be a lot sleeker. It could float a lot more weight. That was my main gripe with it. It only floats 250 pounds. Any more than that, and you're really going to start noticing the back end bog down. Your water line, instead of being under here, will be here. It'll be touching this. And the back of the boat will be almost underneath. So you'll be dragging your T-handle in the water, which is actually even a problem if you are relatively lightweight. This boat's not very well balanced. The majority of the weight is in the back 60% of the boat when you're sitting. If you could move the seat up farther, which you probably could if you spent some time with it, move the seat up a little bit, maybe install a seat up here with a backrest here. However, then you'd be cramping your legs. 
and then you have to reinstall your foot pegs. The drain plug is nice. Being able to get all the water out of a kayak at the end of the day is very nice when you don't have to use a sponge. However, getting it back in, it can take you a little while, especially if you don't lubricate it first. One of the best things to do is to dip the plug in some water. Get it semi-lubricated before you put it back in there. Otherwise, it's going to take a little bit of time. The more you take it out and put it back in, the better it'll get. Uh, it can also hold up against a rather large amount of punishment. I bumped this thing over some pretty big rocks, and you can see on the bottom of the boat that it's got some it's got some scratches. It's got some nice digs in it. Quite a bit of wear. Most of those are from the Susquehanna River, and I've beaten it over some pretty big rocks. It doesn't seem to phase it much. It's relatively flexible, and I think that's where it really saves it. The bad thing is, is that it's really flexible. So if you do hit a rock, you're gonna feel it really bad. And if you're grabbing a hold of the front here, to stand up and get out, or pushing down on the backs, to stand up and get it out, you'll feel it flexing. And you can see that it'll bend down quite substantially underneath my hand. But I think that's the plastic saving grace. If it wasn't that flexible, I think it would just fall apart and crack. So all around, I would say that it's a really good starter kayak. With a few modifications, can be made into a decent little fishing kayak. Particularly if you're going on ponds, small lakes. Nothing too rigorous. If you're going on a river, fast moving water, riffles, anything of the sort, you should probably get something a little longer. I ended up upgrading to a 13-foot semi-touring kayak, which suits my needs a lot better. However, this is an excellent beginner kayak, and I would recommend for anybody to get one if they want to get started with kayaking or kayak fishing, and they don't want to spend a lot of money.